when you're ready to start building string or something you might want to keep in mind is not getting grease all over your table. Good grief, where'd that come from? Okay, we've got all the frames cut out. You can see them sitting here. And I've taken the time to put a sealer coat on these. I uh, decided to do this before I put them on the boat this time. And that seals all the edges, the corners down in here, the places you can't get to once it's assembled. And I used water base, which I typically use oil base, but I thought I'd try water base this time. And the problem is it raises the grain, the water does. So they're, they're real coarse. And what I've done, or what I'm about to do rather, is just take a piece of 220 grit. I don't want to use the power tool, that's a little too aggressive because I don't want to sand my finish off, but I just want to knock down that uh, raised edge, and I don't know if you can if you can hear that or not, but uh, I'm just going to take this, it says 220, I found an old sanding disc that I've used, and just a real lightly, doesn't take much at all, go over it, and right there, and it's amazing the difference that makes. So, I'm going to take the time to do all these, so it's going to take me about five minutes, and then I'm going to set up and start setting up the strong bag. With the frames done, I need to make the mounting brackets for the um, to mount the frames onto the strong back. Now I've used an old set. I took apart, saved these. These are just two by fours ripped into two by two squares, roughly. And these are the brackets I made. And here's a little trick when you do this: uh, you've got to set these up, and you've got to set that so that everything's flat and square. Uh, the easiest way I found to do this: drive these screws in beforehand. Get them started. Makes it easier. These are just those gold deck screws. You can use drywall screws or whatever. It doesn't really matter. Drywall screws just tend to uh, be a little brittle. Good cordless driver will pop the head off of them. All right. And as I said, draw a center line down through here. Mark this roughly in your center. I've already got screws in here, so I'm just lining them up with these screws roughly and then I can sit it on this table where it's nice and flat since there's nothing critical about it and then I can hold it easier if you're not sure of yourself use a clamp I've done this enough I don't have to clamp them Get to Pull it up tight. I get by with two screws usually. Nothing wrong with using three. The thing is just make sure they're good and steady. And then just repeat the process over and over. Something to keep in mind when you're looking for stringer stock is recycling old wood. You can take old beams and cut them down. Uh, in this case, I'm actually taking some old stringers out of a boat we built was built for a demo, was never used, so the stringers are in perfect shape. They're a little rough, uh, it was a, it was a, did I say a demo boat, it was actually a prototype, so we didn't spend a lot of time finishing it. But the wood is better than anything I've got in the rack or what I can go down and get, because good wood's hard to find. This is real straight grain, minimal knots, say it's just something I don't find, so I went back and forth, but it's like I can't justify giving him a lower quality wood uh, overusing an old and recycling some old stuff. So that's what I'm doing. And I've done a bunch of it here. What I'm doing is, as I say, some of these are just not as, as smooth finish as I uh, do for somebody. So what I'm doing, I'm just taking my block planing, lightly passing over them, cleaning them up, cleaning them up. See, I just, I didn't take a lot of time sanding on these. And since they've been old, they're hard to sand. And the shavings I'm taking off are just paper thin. So I'm just basically scraping the top layer off. Okay, you can't see it, but slightly rough there. Now it's very smooth. And it's going just that quick. And a couple of them had a little bit of paint on them. Again, this just scrapes that, takes that paint surface off. And it's going to give him a better quality of wood in his boat than if I took what I've got in the rack or I go out and buy some because say, it's just very hard to find good, not free straight grain wood around here. So keep that in mind when you're shopping for stringer. Now I'm ready to start up my strong, uh, setting up my strong back. 
Now something you will not be able to see is I have taken a chalk line and I've stretched a line down through here as a center. Now I'm going to re-strike it because it's a little faded down here. Let me set my tools aside. And it doesn't matter if it's dead center, but that's going to be your reference point for setting up the boat. So I'm going to try to hit the old one there. Again, nothing critical about it. Just get it right. I mean, close to center if you can. If it's a little off, doesn't matter. Pull that tight. And there you've got a nice dark line down through there to work off of. And looks like I missed my old one, but that's okay. All right. Now I've got my drawing, which will be in your plans. Shows you how to set up the strong back. Personally, I like to start my zero point, which is the stern of the boat. And let's see. I'm going to start at that end. And, I mean, I've got my measurements on here, so it tells you what to do. And the first one is at two foot. So I'm going to come down through here, and I'm going to measure off the end and come up literally two foot and make a mark. That way, if I need to measure anything, I can go back and start down here on this end and know that's my zero point. And my next mark, six foot. And you're going to mark a line across it's going to be 90 degrees to your chalk line don't measure it off of here unless you're dead sure you're square <sighs> now my two foot and there it is so as i say i know you can't see it on here i tell you what this is not the best square for this but i can do it but i'm going to line it up with the blue chalk line and there's my mark and i'll come over here And carry that across and then i go down through here i'm gonna have to look for it i forgot what it was six feet so two four six two four right there again square with the chalk line not with the edge of your strong back unless you are sure all right here's my brackets now, on, again, shad is an exception. It has a little different bow construction. So it has a drawing, and it's very specific about how you set up the strong back. Pay attention to if you have one. Most of them don't. All right, my six-foot bracket was located at, that's two foot. So that's that one. Now, six foot right there. And these two are the same. And I want... My face edge lined up on my six foot mark. And this is what I say, you're gonna take that center line we pulled down there, line it up with the blue chalk line I just put. Make sure it's square, meets right there at the intersection. And I don't have one handy, but this is a real good idea to clamp these before you're doing it, so I'm gonna find a clamp. All right, I found a clamp. Put that on there. Hold it in place, then tap it, line it up, and drive it down. Now, you don't have to have the clamp, but I do recommend one because they will slip on you when you're driving the screw. Well, that went easy. That didn't sound good. You can turn the torque down on that. But that's sturdy as a rock. And then I'll go down through here and I'll do the others same way. Be sure and watch for episode 5 when we start to assemble the frame.